to tell you, I am such a loser. I spent the weekend, this is what I did. I, I read Meltdown, this one, and then I also read this one. This is fantastic as well. New Deal, Raw Deal, wanted to get both of them on. Burton Folsom Jr. is the author of New Deal, Raw Deal, a new book exposing the myth um, that is FDR's New Deal. So, so let me start with, uh, you know what, Thomas, let me, let me start with you. I said earlier, maybe the best thing we should do is nothing at all. Can you make a case for that? Well, historically, you can make an interesting case, theoretically and historically, but there's the case of the Great Depression of 1920, which no one's ever heard of, because the government at that time didn't do anything to try to get us out of it. They did the exact opposite of what every Keynesian blockhead today tells us to do. They actually cut the government budget, so no fiscal stimulus, so-called. The Federal Reserve System did basically nothing. And here you have a depression that was worse in its first year than the first year of the Depression of 29. And yet, in no time, the economy was back on its feet, setting production records once again. All the bad malinvestments of the preceding boom were all cleared out, and you had a robust recovery. Whereas in 1929 and, and thereafter, what did you have? Tinker, 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 year after year after year. And regardless of the fact that in the media you hear even today that Herbert Hoover sat back and did nothing during the Great Depression, if only he had. Everything he did made it worse so that in 1932, when FDR was running against him, his vice presidential nominee actually said, Hoover is leading the country down the road to socialism. Everybody knew he was intervening. And so year after year after year, you get the depression persists, you got double-digit unemployment, Maybe there's a lesson here. The one time the government said in American history, we're going to roll up our sleeves and solve this thing, the thing would not go away. They would not allow the recovery to take place. Okay, hang on just a second. Uh, did anybody see, anybody see this from Newsweek? We're all socialists now. Really? Um, I like this one. We're all socialists now except me, and I think the blue hand may be flipping the red hand off, but I'm not, I'm not sure... We're all socialists now. Um, Burton, let me go to you. I, I read your book this weekend, New Deal, Raw Deal, and I have to tell you, I didn't learn this in school. I, everybody will say, oh, we need a new, new deal, something I warned about two years ago and said, oh, it's coming. Tell, tell us why the new, new deal is really bad. Tell us about the new deal. Well, the New Deal was a disaster. We had massive federal spending, and after six years of this massive sp federal spending, we had doubled the national debt. Uh, Henry Morgenthau, who was Secretary of Treasury, said, hey, we've tried spending, and it does not work. He said this after the April 1939 unemployment statistics came in, and it was 20%. Unemployment. Okay, I'm, I'm trying to figure out, guys, and, and maybe Thomas will go back to you. The, 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 the Roaring Twenties came after the crash of the 1920s, and yet it was, it was demonized. Exactly the same way that, that everything is being demonized, the rich are being demonized, but, but yet you say it really truly is the Fed that is causing this problem back then uh, and, and now. Can you explain that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the great free market economists of the 20th century predicted pretty much what we're seeing. F.A. Hayek won the Nobel Prize uh, in 1974 for basically saying that if you have a central bank like the Fed that's established by the government, has all these government-granted monopoly privileges, and it forces interest rates below the level that the free market would have set them, it sets the economy on an unsustainable boom. It sets investors out on investment trajectories that cannot be completed. There aren't enough resources to complete them. And so he predicted that there would be inevitably a bust. And a lot of these economists predicted that, of course, the bust would then be blamed on capitalism, as if it's the free market's fault that the government's crummy central bank forces interest rates below where the market would have set them. If we let the market set interest rates, you don't have these crazy asset bubbles. Meanwhile, we've had the Federal Reserve both in the 20s and today inflating these crazy bubbles, and now we've had probably the biggest asset bubble, bubble in world history, and they're all claiming they have no idea what caused it. I mean, talk about blockheads. So, uh, Burton, it, help me out. I, I, um, I'm a regular schmo, man. I, I mean this, and I apologize, America, but I, I was, I'm a recovering alcoholic. Uh, I'm, I'm a former DJ, man. I mean, you couldn't get dumber than me. I'm a self-educated guy. 
After 9-11 happened, I decided to educate myself because of my children. I wanted to make sure I knew what was going on in the world. About two years ago, I started to look at the economy and saying, this isn't right, this isn't going to work. So I tried to educate myself on, on the economy. When I read things like both of your gentlemen, both of your book, uh, I, as I read them this weekend, and I have done it so many times, I read the history of this country. Woodrow Wilson was a nightmare. FDR, not anything like what I thought he was and what's being taught at school. Burton, why are we not taught the truth? Well, historians are committed to the idea that you need to centralize power in Washington and that more things can be accomplished through centralized power than a decentralized system where private decision makers are spending their money as they see fit. Uh, what Tom said about the 1920s is true. In fact, we cut taxes in the 1920s. We had a top income tax rate in 1920 of 73% top marginal rate coming into the early 20s, and that helped explain why we had 12% unemployment in 1921. When Harding and Coolidge came in, they cut tax rates and they had budget surpluses every year. We cut about one-third of the national debt in the 1920s. We reduced tax rates to a top marginal rate of 25 percent and lo and behold we're out of the depression and according to the League of Nations we had the lowest unemployment rate of any nation any Western nation they studied by 1929 it's it really, sounds like a pretty good recipe yeah. for success it's amazing thanks gentlemen if you want to see the similarities between FDR's New Deal which prolonged the depression and Obama's stimulus package wait until you see it it's amazing I mean it's the same damn thing sign up for my free email